Welcome to the Inovia Consulting Webinar Series. This session is powered by U.S. Transactions Corporation. USD is a boutique payment processing firm providing you with personalized service. Scan the QR code to learn more about Inovia Consulting and to see the latest Business Central news and training for your business. My name is Galen Norman. I'm an application consultant with Inovia Consulting. Uh, with me today is Nick Kudelka Rap, who may or may not be helping me with my uh, 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 approval workflow later. I uh, may be having some technical difficulties, but he's another application consultant on our team. Uh, to give a foundation for the uh, business central specific part of the presentation, we'll start with a brief overview of Power Automate and its place in the Power Platform. We'll also talk about the components and types of Power Automate flows. Then we'll move to Power Automate's role in Business Central. We'll talk about the types and flows available in Business Central as well as some setup requirements for them. And after we have a full understanding of Power Automate and its role in and outside of Business Central, we'll move to the demonstration portion of the presentation. Uh, I'll demonstrate how to make some different flows available in Business Central. And then we'll wrap up with a Q&A for any, uh, anything I haven't answered throughout the presentation. The objectives of this presentation are pretty straightforward. Uh, I want to make sure that you understand the different types of Power Automate flows available in Business Central. Uh, I also want you to understand the components of these flows. And I want you to understand the required setups behind the flows, especially approvals. After today, my hope is that you can create and apply at least one Power Automate flow in your own Business Central environments. Just so you're aware, if you attended or have viewed my previous webinar on Power Automate, some of the information contained here will be reviewed. Please bear with me. So without further ado, let's jump into the Power Automate overview. Before we get into Power Automate specifically, let's talk about the Power Platform as a whole. Uh, the Microsoft Power Platform is a collection of powerful business tools developed by Microsoft that enables developers and non-developers alike to create customized business solutions across their environments. It empowers team members to build their own business solutions and simplify the process of building them. The four pillars of the Power Platform are Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power Pages. Power BI is a business analytics tool that enables users to create and share reports and dashboards that use creative illustrations and charts called visualizations to communicate business data. Power Apps is an application development tool that allows a user to build and share custom apps with low code or no coding required. The two types of Power Apps are Canvas Apps and Model Driven Apps. Power Automate is a low-code tool that allows for automation of repetitive business processes. Power Pages allows a user to create low-code business websites. Power Pages is the newest pillar of the Power Platform, having previously been called Power Portals, which used to be a third type of Power, Power App. Dataverse is Microsoft's built-in data source. Instead of... Uh, in it is not a separate pillar of the Power Platform. Instead, it functions as a data source uh, storage and management service where uh, a company can build and link data tables through relationship management. All of the pillars of the Power Platform can access Dataverse. And Microsoft Copilot Studio has fully replaced what used to be called Power Virtual Agents. It isn't technically a part of the Power Platform anymore because it's because it has become a part of the larger world of Microsoft, uh, with most programs Microsoft offers being accompanied by a Copilot. As its name implies, Copilot is a chatbot that accompanies many Microsoft programs that allows a user to turn questions and suggestions from text into actions. Let's take a quick break to check your learning with the first question for credit. <clears throat> What is the name of the built-in data storage and management tool that can be used by any of the pillars of the Power Platform? And I apologize, I told Riley ahead of time, I'm dealing with some allergy issues. So um, 
might be clearing my throat a little bit. I'm going to get a drink now, though. <clears throat> As we discussed, uh, Microsoft Dataverse is a data storage and management service where a company can build and link data tables through relationship management. Power Automate's base component is the flow. A flow at its core is an if-then statement. A flow is made up of two parts, triggers, which determine what starts the flow, that is the if of the if-then statement, and actions, which determine what the flow does. This is the then of the if-then statement. You can create Power Automate flows from scratch, but Microsoft also offers hundreds of templates in Power Automate Studio. You can search templates by function or by the program whose connector you're using. I'll demonstrate this later. There are four types of triggers in Power Automate. The first type of trigger is automated. Automated triggers take effect automatically in response to stimulus other than manual interaction. For example, when a new team is created in Microsoft Teams or a file is modified in SharePoint, automated triggers are the most common triggers. The second trigger type is scheduled. You can set up a trigger to send a reminder email every day at a certain time, or send a customer statement once a month. These triggers include the process to set, uh, the process set to take place and the interval recurrence. Another type of trigger is an instant. Instant triggers generally take the form of buttons. These buttons can either be inside of Power Automate and require a user to log into Power Automate to initiate, or more commonly, they can be programmed into Microsoft and third-party programs and allow manual triggering of a flow. And the last type of trigger is a business process trigger, also called a desktop trigger. This trigger is uh, a, a sort of hybrid between automated and instant triggers. This type of trigger requires a human to push some sort of button that transitions them to the next step of a process. For instance, if sales order entry requires navigation between multiple pages in different programs, a user can click a next button to move to the next step without needing to navigate there manually. Now that you have an understanding of Power Automate and its role in the Power Platform, let's dive into the main topic you came here to learn about today, Power Automate and Business Central. There are three types of Power Automate flows available in Business Central, instant scheduled flows and automated. Same as before, instant flows in Business Central take the form of buttons. These buttons can trigger a variety of flows. You can use an instant trigger to schedule a meeting with a particular vendor, or you can make a button to set a reminder for yourself to follow up with a potential customer. Scheduled flows are a little tricky in Business Central. Basically, it's an available flow uh, type, but there aren't any templates available for it, and you can't make one directly in BC. And I'll show you what that means later. Uh, many of the scheduled flows you can accomplish using Power Automate are already available as job queues in Business Central. And just like regular automated flows, automated flows in Business Central are triggered by some business process. For instance, you can create a flow to no notify you whenever a new record is created. You can notify a team whenever a particular master record is blocked, or you can send a congratulatory message uh, on Teams when a sales goal has been met. Microsoft includes workflows, uh, approval workflows under the automated umbrella, but because you have to click a button I personally group them more with uh, instant than automated. Uh, the most significant difference between regular instant flow and an approval workflow is an approval workflow button already exists in Business Central, whereas creating a new instant flow uh, other than, apologize, uh, other than an approval workflow creates a new standalone button. You'll see this difference in the demonstration. Let's take another break for your second question for credit.
Three of the four main types of Power Automate flows are available to use in Business Central. What is the one that is not available? The business process or desktop flow. As I alluded to previously, with the version 23 release of Business Central came a very interesting addition to how Power Automate works in Business Central. What you see here is what Power Automate looked like in Business Central prior to version 23 release. Essentially, you can initiate the creation of a flow by clicking Create from Blank, <clears throat> or you can navigate to your existing flows by clicking Manage Flows. Oh, apologize. These were not VC specific though. Create from blank simply navigates the user to a, a blank flow in Power Automate. And Manage Flows navigates the user to Power Automate and shows all flows. Version 23 though, allows users to accomplish more from Business Central without having to leave it. As you see here, the menu within Business Central has changed to allow the user to choose which kind of flow to create from a particular page. What you'll see here too is the options change depending on what kind of page the user is currently on. The top example shows the flows available on the sales orders list page, and the bottom is an actual sales order card. And you'll see that create approval flow is available on the card and is not on the list. In this way, Power Automate is telling you, telling the user that approval flows are unavailable out of the box on the sales order list page. A developer could extend the system to add an approval workflow there if the user wants, but that would be custom functionality and not covered on this presentation. Going back to the scheduled flows, this is what I meant by you can't make one directly in BC. There aren't any pages in Business Central that allow a user to create a scheduled flow out of the box. There may be some user uses that come up later, but in my experience, if a flow template isn't available uh, as a template out of the box, it's best to try another approach. The manage flows function hasn't changed. Another very handy addition uh, that was added in Business Central version 23 is the ability to create an, an entire auto power automate approval or flow without leaving BC. As you see here from a customer card, you can create three types of flows. If I select create action based on a flow, I'll be shown a list of templates available for the customer card page. I can search these templates if I don't see the one I want right away, but if I wanna create my own, I can click create a flow and I'll be navigated to a new flow in Power Automate. The key difference between this and the create from blank function available pre-version 23 is that the create a flow function will start a flow specific to the page where the request originated. I'll demonstrate this later. All right, for our last question for credit. True or false, in my business central environment, I'll be able to create and modify any of the flows that I need directly in Business Central. The answer is false. While you can create a wide variety of flows directly from Business Central, if you cannot find a template that suits your needs, you can create a blank flow that navigates you to Power Automate to create. Additionally, you cannot modify any Power Automate flows directly in Business Central. You'll need to go to Power Automate to do that. Now let's dive deeper into what I consider the most important and most popular type of Power Automate flow available in Business Central, approval workflows. Approval workflows existed prior to Power Automate being added to Business Central. Power Automate allows the user to extend the abilities of these built-in workflows though. The components of an approval workflow, a requester, single or multiple approvers, are the same for Business Central as they are in most other circumstances. 
The key difference being that for an approval user, approval workflow to work in Business Central, the approval user setup needs to be configured correctly. I'll talk about that on the next slide. The most popular uses for approval workflows in BC are to approve documents such as purchase and sales documents and journals and master records such as items, customers, and vendors. If an approval workflow is set up for a particular record or a document, it cannot be used until it has been approved. For instance, if an approval workflow on a customer card or an approval workflow on a customer card prevents posting to that card prior to approval and an approval workflow on a document prevents that the document from being released until it is approved. Approval workflows, uh, both those native to Business Central and those offered by Power Automate rely on the approval user setup. This setup, which I'll show in the demonstration, creates a hierarchy in which approvals can be handled. For instance, in the case provided here, the GN test user is the approver for Enkidelka Rep, Nick, the partner on the call. Uh, this means that any approvals triggered by Nick may be approved by GN test. Uh, depending on who is notified as a result of the flow, however, it, uh, it could also be any approvers currently set up uh, to approve higher than GN test. In this case, the GN Norman is the approval user uh, the approval administrator, so that user could approve any flows created beneath it. The list shown here is very short because it's from a test environment, but it could be very long and detailed with multiple levels of approvals along the way. One thing to note, though, is there is a uh, known issue with Microsoft that requires the creator of the Power Automate flow to be the approval administrator. So in my test environment, G Norman is the end user, uh, is user uh, used to create my Power Automate flows. I will use GN test or my partner Nick to demonstrate the creation of approvals and G Norman to approve those flows for this reason. Like I said, this is a known Microsoft issue. This is meant to be addressed in a, in a coming update, but I don't have any word on when that update is set to take place. For now, my best suggestion is to have a single user that creates any Power Automate approval workflows for Business Central, and that user is the designated uh, approval administrator. That user should not be responsible for anything else in Business Central. One of the clients I currently work with has a user they call Power Platform Admin. So it's powerplatformadmin at .com. And that's the user they use to create all the Power Automate flows for Business Central. While that user is the approval administrator, they do not actually approve any flows because the next user below them should be the top of the hierarchy chain that doesn't require any approvals. All right, now uh, on to what you've likely all been waiting for. It's time for demonstrations. It looks like maybe, yep, no worries. Uh, I'll be taking the approval workflows myself, no problem. All right, can everybody see Business Central at this point? Um, all right, so the first type of uh, flow that I'm going to be demonstrating is the instant flow. Uh, in Business Central, you can email a sales order, purchase quote, et cetera, uh, but sending that kind of information via Teams is a little bit more difficult, especially with attachments and everything. Uh, and you can't usually send master records like customers and items. Um, so for this example, I'm going to send uh, customer information via Teams. So where I'm going to start with that is I'm going to start on my customer page. And this is all test information from Cronus. Uh, there might be some other test information in here, but this is not sensitive information, just disclaimer. Uh, I'm gonna pick this customer here. Now I'm gonna go into Power Automate. 
and I'm going to create an action-based flow. Action-based flow is what Business Central calls instant flows. So I'm going to click on that. Um, what I want is I want to be able to send customer information via Teams. I don't see any of those templates right here. So I'm going to create a flow, and it's going to open up Power Automate. All right, so what you see when you open up Power Automate now is your, your flow. It's essentially blank, but this is your trigger. Remember, trigger is the if. Um, for a selected record, basically just means this is where the button is going to be in Business Central. Uh, as it shows here, you can do the, all of these things are optional. Um, you got to put some kind of information. Otherwise, there's just going to be a button floating out there. Um, Otherwise, so I'm going to click, I'm going to choose the environment. It's my sandbox. Uh, if I didn't choose the company, it means that this button would be uh, in all of the companies in my sandbox, but I'm going to choose a company for this example. Uh, and then the page or table is also optional, but what I'm going to, I'm going to use it over here. I'm going to use my page inspection to find out what page the customer page is if I don't know it. Page 21, I could use table. The issue that I find with table is that uh, table can be accessed a lot of different places. It could be problematic. I prefer to use page. So I'm gonna use page 21 and that's my trigger. So the next step is I'm going to get records from Business Central. And like I said before, you can either type in the connector or you can type in the action. I'm gonna type in the connector because it's more specific. And I'm also gonna copy and paste Business Central because I'm gonna be using this a lot. I'm gonna come down here to Business Central. This is the connector you're gonna to wanna to use. This is the Business Central SaaS connector. Uh, this is for on-prem. Uh, the environment I'm using is in SaaS, so I'm gonna click on this. <clears throat> Excuse me. And like I said, I'm going to get record. And what this is doing is it's pulling the information off of this button. So the button where this lies on, on the customer card that I'm on, it's gonna pull, this is gonna pull that customer information. So I'm gonna choose the environment and company and everything again. As you see here, there's red dots next to it, meaning that it, or red stars, I'm sorry, that shows that it's required. The API category is V2.0. That's the only one I've ever used. Uh, the table is going to be customers. Now the row ID is going to be dynamic content. Dynamic content is uh, information, it's content that's going to change based on the circumstance that the flow is triggered. So for, for this, I'm going to use system ID that's gonna come from the selected record, which is gonna come from the button. So for instance, if I click the button on this customer, it's gonna pull this customer information. If I push it on another one, it's gonna pull that one. That's what that means. Uh, after I've gotten the record, I wanna create what's called an adaptive card. Adaptive cards are kind of a new and up and coming uh, technology in, uh, in Microsoft and other software. Um, basically it's a, it's a summary uh, in this circumstance. You can use it for a lot of different things, but in this circumstance, it's a summary. Um, so the adaptive card is going to be based on the customer where I'm at. So this is also dynamic content here. So it's going to grab the URL of the customer where it is, and then I'm going to choose the app. So I'm going to choose teams. You can use other, it would be another, uh, teams type uh, chat communication uh, type program. I've never used any of the other ones, uh, but I've only, I've only used Teams. This is a relatively new uh, action here. Uh, I'm sure this will expand over time. So, teams. And now I'm going to choose Teams. Microsoft Teams. <clears throat> and I'm going to post the card. And I'm going to post it in a chat or a channel. 
if you post it, you can post it as a user. I usually post it as a Flowbot. That way there's no need to respond or anything like that. It just comes from uh, the Flowbot, which is essentially just uh, you know an unmanned robot within Teams uh, for Power Automate. <clears throat> Um, you can use it within one of your power apps, but like I said, for this purpose, I'm going to use uh, Flowbot. And I'm going to post it as, post it in a channel. The other options are uh, chat with a Flowbot. I'm not going to do the chat or the group chat. It's just going to be, uh, it's, it's simplest to put it into the channel. And now I'm going to make sure that I'm on the right connector, what I did, I switched between my two profiles here, because uh, this is my, my test profile. So I'm going to pick the team where it's going to get posted. I'm going to choose the channel. And here's the last piece of uh, dynamic content. I'm going to pull the adaptive card that was created. So the button on the customer card we pulled the customer information, made it into an adaptive card, and now we're going to post that adaptive card into Teams. So I'm going to save it. And I always forget to do this. Notice it named it a very generic name. It uh, just kind of describes the, the, the flow itself. So I'm going to change this to uh, customer button and then save it, save again. Come over here, close my page inspection, and then I'm gonna go to Power Automate and there's my button. So I can click on this button and it's gonna pull up my flow over here. I might have to move this again. Yep, there it is. If I wasn't already signed into these things, it would make me sign in at this point. Continue, run. And now if I go into Teams, there it is. Here's my uh, adaptive card. It doesn't have a ton of information on it right now. Um, if you wanted to expand this, uh, this is the stock adaptive card allowed, uh, you know, by Power Automate. Uh, you can have a developer help you develop this out, uh, extend it with more information. A good uh, use case for this would be like, say, if you're wanting to let AR know that you have a, um, you know, a customer that's overdue or something like that. It's a it's a real quick way of sending it that way. Uh, I wanted to show one other thing here. So I'm on page 21. That's on the customer card itself, right? Well, let's say I wanted to put it on, come on. Let's say I wanted to put it on the list too. Let's see if it works. It should. So page 22 is, is there. So what I have to do is and page 22. Save. Ready to go, perfect. So let's go in here. Automate, and it does, there it is, customer button. I can do it from here. I don't even have to go into the customer card. So, run. Done. Just know that whenever you're you're clicking one of these uh, these buttons related to Power Automate in Business Central, it'll pop up your window over here, and you have to uh, allow it to run. And there's my oh, it's my customer list. I'm sorry, it didn't come through the way it should, uh, but it should come through with the um, uh, the customer information, the customer card. Um, all right, so that is instant flows. The next type of flow that I'm going to demonstrate is a scheduled flow. Uh, 
this is another one. Like I said, it's it's not it's not impossible. Uh, it's just not available as a template out of the box. So if I go into Power Automate, search templates, if I say Business Central Schedule, this isn't a scheduled flow. This is this is a uh, using something within Business Central to schedule via Outlook. Uh, I can't schedule a flow to run within Business Central using an existing template. So I'm going to have to create a scheduled flow from scratch. So I come in here to create. I click on scheduled flow. Now, I'm going to name this now, but you could skip it and, and make your own. Uh, I'm going to say, so let's say a uh, use case. Let's say you have users who can create certain documents like sales documents, sales orders, uh, but they don't have permissions to post. But you don't necessarily want uh, or need an approval workflow. Um, let's say we use Power Automate for that. So sales order posting. Posting. Um, I can have this run, you know, at the end of every day or something like that and have a, you know, have a supervisor run in at, at five o'clock every day, run through the list, uh, and then have it post at seven o'clock or something like that. Uh, for purposes of this example, I'm going to have it run once a minute. Uh, just, it's easier to test that way. And I'm just going to, the starting time doesn't matter at this point because it's for testing as well, but I'm going to create it now. Uh, what you'll see here, this is the new uh, Power Automate Studio Designer. Uh, I'm not going to use this. I want to keep everything consistent for right now, and not all of Business Central flows are available in that right now. So I'm going to come back to just the regular designer. Uh, as you see here, you have the uh, trigger, which is a schedule, once a minute. And then here, <clears throat> we have the date that it starts. 220 of 24 and the time in Greenwich Mean Time. So if you're able to translate that uh, into whatever your local time is, you can you can do that um, and then translate back. But uh, for this purpose, I'm going to test it uh, manually. So I'm not going to do anything with changing this. So what I need to do is I need to get all of the sales orders, right? Because that's what we need uh, to be posting. So again, I'm gonna search for Business Central, the SAS connector, and I'm gonna get records. So what you'll see here is you have get, I'm gonna get records. Uh, so, oh, get record. So you have get record here, V3, and then you have get record here, V2. V3 is the newest actions uh, in Power Automate. V2 is going to be, uh, uh, it's going to be removed here shortly. Um, deprecated. Couldn't think of the word. Uh, the V2 actions and triggers are all going to be deprecated eventually. So try to use V3 if you can. Um, if you have old flows with V2 actions and triggers in them, uh, it's probably best to try to convert those over now. Uh, Microsoft isn't going to force you to at the moment, but eventually it is going to be an inev inevitability. Uh, so get record. Oh, I'm sorry. It's find records. Let me get rid of that. It's going to be find records. Same principle applies. We want to use find records V3. And then same thing as before. We're going to pick the environment, the company. The API is always V2.0. And we're going to find sales orders. There it is right there. So I'm going to stop right now and I'm going to save it because uh, I'm looking for a piece of information and I'll show you exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to test this flow. I'm going to test it manually. Run it. Done. Flow ran successfully.
Galen, your video paused. Oh, did it? Mm -hmm. I wonder if it's my internet. I hope not. You can still hear me though, right? Yes, I can hear you. That's not good. I can see your video and I can see you now. Everything's back to normal. Oh, it is? Okay, perfect. All right, so let's try this again. So we're gonna refresh. I'm not sure why that doesn't want to work, but we're going to go into here anyway. Um, sales order posting, we're going to come back this other way. We're going to go into this flow, the test. And we're going to take a look at the outputs. There it is. That's what I was looking for. I'm going to click the download. And to the, on this screen, this may look intimidating to somebody who doesn't know what they're looking at, but I'm going to tell you, it's real simple. This is a sales order. There's a sales order number, order date, posting date, customer information, bill to, sell to, um, ship to, and then there is a summary of the lines. Uh, you're not going to see any lines in here because uh, sales order lines are a separate uh separate connector, but you're going to see a summary here. I don't need the lines. I just need the, uh, the summary. So what I'm looking for though, is I'm looking for this information because I want to filter down. I want to filter by today. Okay. Um, so if I want to filter, I need to use, come on now. I need to filter using some of these advanced options. I'm going to use this filter query right here. So if I want to filter by order date, it's order capital D date equals, and then the, that format, that year, month, date. So if I want to filter by order date and then space EQ for equal, then it's 2024 02 20 save. Now I'm going to run it again. It ran successfully. Let's look at the outputs. It's zero. There's nothing in here. There's no sales orders in there. I wonder why. So if I go to sales orders in Business Central, and I go to my filter for all my orders that were made today, there aren't any in there. Perfect, it's doing exactly what I want it to do. So now I'm gonna create a new sales order. This is just test information. Perfect, I am going to sell a bicycle. One. There it is. Here's my sales order. So if I run this again, well, it ran successfully. Let's look at the outputs now. There it is, 1062. That's the, uh, the order that I wanted, because there it is. So now that I know how the filter works, I'm going to do my action. Uh, is a central and now I'm going to go to run action. Run action can do a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm going to pick all this information again. But now I'm going to do sales order, ship an invoice. But I need some additional information. I need this ID. The ID is going to come from the find records. It's dynamic content again. And it's going to run it for every record that it finds. So it should only be one. 
because obviously there's only one sales order in there. So let's test it. This step usually takes a, a few seconds here. There it is, it ran successfully. How do we know it ran successfully? If I look at my filter, it's gone, it posted. And that's how this flow works. Now, you could get a lot deeper into filters. You can pull from a certain date range. You can you can post only what's open, things like that. I'm, I'm running a little short on time, so I'm not gonna get into that. Just understand, if you understand uh, the OData, and you know what's behind it and how to find the filters, you're gonna be able to narrow this down quite a bit. So my last example is a, an automated flow and I'm gonna use a, uh, an approval workflow. So we used uh, customers, we use sales, how about purchasing now? Let's say you have purchasers who need approval to uh, uh, post or do anything with purchase orders. Um, first, let's go to purchase orders. So if I go to a purchase order, this one's already released. I, it doesn't, I'm not looking at a particular one. I'm just going to power automate and I'm going to create an approval flow. This is an example of one flow that you can make entirely from within Business Central that you don't have to do anything in Power Automate. It's pretty awesome. So the first example here, so request approval from Business Central purchase order first response. This is the most popular. If you look at the numbers at the bottom right of the templates, you can see how many times it's been used recently. Uh, other he over here is require all. What this is looking for is if I'm sending this to more than one person for approval, it means that one of those individuals can complete this flow. This is for more like a more sensitive one where if I have something I need multiple people to approve before I can, before I can complete, that's the kind of flow I'm going to use. Uh, custom, I'm not going to get into, uh, but this is the one I'm going to use. So it's going to ask me to sign in to all of these and I'm going to rename it. Now it's gonna have me pick the approver. And like I said before, it's gonna be the G Norman approver. This approver has to have a user in Business Central and they have to be listed as an approver in that approval user setup for the approval workflow to work. Workflow added successfully. I didn't have to do anything in Power Automate and I can do everything I need to do for this approval workflow without ever going to Power Automate now. But I'm gonna show you in Power Automate that it exists. Purchase order approval, there it is. So back to the approval user setup. Like I said before, the creator of the Power Automate flows should be the approval administrator due to that Microsoft known Microsoft issue right now. Um, anybody beneath them can create approval uh, approval or they can initiate approval flows, but they can't they shouldn't be creating them. It should be this user. Um, for this example, I'm going to log in as GN test because Nick's still having issues with uh, technology. Technology is not not been friends to us the last couple of weeks. It's actually fortunate that I'm able to get through this uh, today. So, um, but that being said, I'm going to log in as GN test and GN test can be approved by G Norman. Uh, Nick's user could be approved by GN test or G Norman. That's how that flow works. So I'm going to log in here.
So if I go to Mana, purchase orders, and I'm going to make a new purchase order. And this time I'm going to buy a bicycle. Sure, I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna post it, but I can't because I have to have it approved first. So I'm gonna go back to business or to Power Automate, and I'm gonna go into uh, this flow. And it, you see that I keep going into uh, edit and then test. It's just the best way that I've found to test the flow. Um, you can run flows manually and things like that, but I've found that if you do it this way. Um, Power Automate is actively looking for that trigger, whereas uh, if it like more passively is looking for the trigger, it's still going to happen. It's it's just more like I need this to happen right now. I'm gonna run into I'm gonna go into Power Automate and I'm gonna run the test and then it's gonna work. So I'm gonna click test manually. All these steps are gonna run away. And it's waiting for the trigger. So I'm going to request approval. Now it's pending approval. If we come back to Power Automate, now it's flowing. It's coming through these steps. Uh, these steps, it's like I said, it's part of the template. Uh, this is the initial trigger of when it's created. It's going to get the record, the URL for that particular record. This is uh, Microsoft uh, 365, it used to be Microsoft Office. This is going to get the information from the user who is requesting the approval. So uh, out, this is going to get Outlook, Teams, what have you, uh, from this user and be able, it's going to allow this approver to communicate back to them. So this should be sitting here waiting for me in Teams right now. There it is. So if you see here, GN test sent a request and it's waiting for this approval. So I'm gonna hit approve. This will turn green and it'll kick through the rest of the process. Perfect. These steps right here is basic. This, uh, the purple steps is just kind of it's formatting what this approval looks like. It's not anything. It's if we took it out, it wouldn't. It wouldn't change anything structurally. Just might change the way things look a little bit. Um, the apply to each and react on outcome is uh, just. It just explains to the system what we want to see as feedback. It's going to send it back to the approver. It's going to send a message back to the approver saying it was approved. But it's also going to send. <clears throat> notification to the requester that it has been approved as well. So I'll get, ba get back to that in a second. The way that we can tell that this has been approved is we look for the one ending in 8.2 and instead of under review, it is uh, released, and now I can post it. Oh, and I do that every time. Here. As you can see, it posted, and we're good to go. Can you still hear me? I apologize. Yes, we can still hear you. Um, but yeah, that is my demonstration. So I'm going to come back to the PowerPoint. Uh, and with the demonstrations complete, I'll move to any questions.